Hey guys, today you're going to learn how to take any portrait image and fit it into a triangular photo frame. So this will work on any type of portrait images that you have and I'm going to show you every step that you need to take to get this effect with Photoshop. So if you like these types of videos, make sure you like this video and if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe because I come out with videos like this daily. And if you have any questions, you can comment down below and I'll reply to you as soon as I can. So let's get started. So this works on any type of portrait image that you have. So I would encourage you to follow along with this tutorial with your own portrait photo. So I'm just going to use this photo as an example, but it will work on any photo. So the first thing I'm going to do is resize this image and place it nicely on, on the center. So to resize it, I'm going to press Control T, uh, which is uh, Command T if you're on a Mac. And I'm just going to resize it just like that. And I'm also going to place it on the center. And let's hit enter and that's nicely placed on the center now. Next thing is I'm going to remove this blue background. Since, since it's just a basic looking background, it's quite easy to do. So if you want to learn more about removing backgrounds, I'll leave a few videos in the description below. I'm not going to talk about that in detail in this video. But uh, basically all you do is use this crop selection, uh, um, quick selection tool right here. So just click and hold where the magic wand tool is right here. And this is an option called the quick selection tool. So choose that. And what this will do is it will choose anything that's a similar color around where you clicked. So first I'm going to click here. So it just sampled everything in that little circle there. And then when I click for a second time, it's going to choose even more. And then when I click for a third time, it's going to choose uh, everything else that's blue near it. So it, sometimes it only takes two clicks. Sometimes it only takes three clicks or four clicks. You just need to click, keep clicking around. But watch what happens when I click a bit too much. So it just went over his jacket here and it's also gone over his ears, ears right here. So what we can do about that is we can create a new layer. So you create a new layer by clicking on this little uh, square icon here. And I'm going to choose, uh, let's just say a green color. So I'm going to choose a color that's not on this image here. So it's just a color that that's easy, easy for us to see. And I'm going to deselect that selection that we made off the background by pressing control D so we can get rid of all that selection. Next, I'm going to lower that opacity of the green layer that we created. So I'm just going to rename this green and I'm going to rename this portrait so we can keep all of our layers organized. And I'm going to go into the green layer and lower the opacity of that green layer right here. So now what we can see is what we've kind of gone over. So we can, we can see that we've gone over his jacket and we can also see that we've gone over his uh, ears here. So what I do is I just take the eraser tool right here and I also increase the hardness of that eraser tool to 100%. So if I don't increase the hardness, I'm just going to show you what it looks like at 0%. So you can see the edges are like quite soft. But let's say I increase the hardness to 100% here the edges are really hard. So that's what we want. We want those hard edges so we can crop this out properly. So let's just get rid of all those green bits around his jacket. So you'll see how we're going to make the selection more accurate soon. So let's go over his ears as well. So I'm going to make the brush a little bit smaller by just going up here. You can just resize it like that. Go. And now we have a more accurate selection of um, our subject. So to get that selection back, all you do now is uh, bring the opacity back up to 100%. So that green layer, bring it back up to 100%. And I'm going to hold control and click on the green uh, layer. So that's going to select everything in that layer, which is the background that we selected. But this time we erased out parts of that green when it was going over his jacket and, and when, when it was going over his ears. So now we have a more accurate selection of our subject. So we're going to go back. We're going to hide this green layer now. And we're just going to simply delete the background by just hitting the delete button um, uh, on the portrait layer. So just delete it and there we go. So make sure you have the portrait layer selected when you delete it. Otherwise it won't delete anything. So now we just deleted the background from the subject, but there's still a few lines here and there. So let's just choose the eraser tool and let's just erase all of this out. So usually I don't really um, use the eraser tool. I use 
like the masking tool to hide things and all that. Um, that but that's a more advanced video. I'll leave a few videos to that. Uh, link is in the description for that. So let's uh, zoom out a little bit. So now we can work with this and we can also uh, crop this into a triangle. So to draw the triangle, you need to go to this tool right here called the polygon tool. So if you click and hold right here, uh, it's just where the rectangle tool is or where the custom shape tool is. Just click and hold right there and there's this tool called the polygon tool. So after you've chosen the polygon tool, just click anywhere on the screen and this window will pop up. So this will just ask you what kind of shape do you want? So do you want a shape with four sides, five sides, three sides? So a triangle has three sides. So we just typed in three and we also give it a size. So I want this to be let's just say 700 pixels by 700 pixels. So it doesn't really matter what you give it for uh, width and height, we can resize it later on, but make sure you have the number of sides on three and then click on OK. And then here's our triangle. So I'm going to flip this around by pr pressing Control T or Command T if you're on a Mac. And let's just flip this around and I'm going to hold shift as I'm flipping it around. So it doesn't, um, so we can keep the proportion. So it kind of snaps into like a 90 degree angle, just like that. So hold shift if you want to keep it at a 90 degree angle. So, and I'm going to let go and I'm going to move it down a little bit. And I might actually resize it just a little bit as well. And I think that looks pretty good there. Or we can even resize it like that as well. Cool. So that looks pretty good. And Oops, and I'm gonna hit enter. So now what I'm gonna do is hold control and click on the polygon layer right here. So there's a new layer created that's called polygon one. So that's the triangle. So when you hold control and click on that layer, it's gonna make a selection of that triangle. So now I'm gonna uh, create a new layer and I'm gonna name this layer triangle. And I'm gonna place this triangle just below the portrait image and I'm going to paint it black. So choose the paint bucket tool and choose a black color. Click on OK. So that's the paint bucket tool right here. And uh, just uh, click inside the selection and you've got your triangle now. So now I'm going to deselect that triangle by pressing Control D. Now we need to delete all of these bits right here. So his arms and his jacket that's going, going over the triangle. So to do that, I need to select the triangle again by pressing control and clicking on the triangle layer right here. And that will select everything in the triangle with uh, everything in the layer, which is the triangle shape. So now I'm going to select the portrait layer and now I'm going to inverse this layer. So right now it's selected um, what's inside of this triangle, which is not what we want to erase. I want to erase everything outside of this triangle except for this top part here. So if we inverse the selection, we can erase that. So to inverse a selection, go to select and just click on inverse. And now you can see it's also it's selected all of these edges, everything around it, except for the triangle. So now we can just simply take the eraser tool and we can just erase everything outside of that triangle. So I can make the brush a little bit bigger. Also erase all of this here and click and I'm going to deselect by pressing Control D or Command D if you're on a Mac and there we go. So now we already kind of have a nice triangular frame effect. So next what I'm going to do is I'm going to create like a melting effect just around the, the edges of this triangle. So to do that we're going to use this tool called the smudge tool. So just where it says uh, blur tool or a sharpen tool just click and hold there and you'll see this tool called the smudge tool. So just choose that and we're also going to increase the brush size of the smudge tool. So let's increase it to maybe about 40 and I'm also going to increase the hardness of this brush to about 50%. And also right beside it there's this um, uh, box here called strength. So that's also quite important. I'm going to show you what that is soon but I'll just leave it at about 40% and we're going to increase it later on. So um, let me show you what this is soon. So let's choose the portrait layer and I'm going to zoom in into the portrait layer. And let's choose the smudge tool and I'm simply just going to click and then hold shift and then drag down. So now you can see it's starting to smudge. So again you click first and then you hold shift and then you drag down. So the reason why you hold shift is so you can get that line really straight. If you don't hold shift it's going to kind of go all over the place like this. So you don't want that so you want to hold shift. 
So right now the, the smudge isn't really going far far enough. So I want the smudge to be kind of going down like quite far. So it's only going down this far. So what you do now is just increase the strength. So you can just uh, go back to the smudge tool and just increase the strength to let's just say 90, 95%. So that's quite high. So again, I click and then hold shift and then drag down. So now it's, I think it's a bit too high now. So let's, uh, let's go back a little bit and let's push it down to let's just say 75% and I might also decrease the hardness of the brush to 0%. Now let's see what it looks like. So again, you click first and then you hold shift and then drag down. So that's much better now. So um, then you click first again, then hold shift again, and then drag down. So you just keep doing that over and over again. Click, shift, down. And then click, shift, down. So you just keep doing this all the way around. Click, shift, down. Then click shift down. So let's zoom out and see what this looks like. So I think that looks pretty cool. So you can kind of increase the strength a little bit more now and you can kind of play around with different size of the um, smudge tool. So let's just maybe say I want the brush size to be a little bit smaller now and maybe I'll increase the strength to 90, 96% and again I'm going to click and then drag it down. Click shift and then drag it down click oops so what happens is sometimes when you click uh, press um, shift in the wrong time it connects the smudges together so you don't want that so just press uh, click shift and then drag it down so you just keep going like that now and I'm just gonna check what this is looking like so that's starting to look pretty good so now I'm just gonna speed the video up and I'm just gonna do that all the way around So there we go, I just finished all those smudges and we finally have that nice melting effect and we also have that nice triangle frame around it. So I hope you liked this video, I uh, hope you followed this along and also made the same effect on your photos. If you have any questions you can comment down below and I'll reply to you. And if you haven't liked this video make sure you do and if you haven't already subscribed please subscribe I will be coming out with videos daily. So that's it for this video and I'll see you in the next one.